Franklin Pierce, 14th President of the United States, was born November 23, 1804, in Hillsborough, New Hampshire, the seventh of nine children in the family of Benjamin and Anna Pierce. His father, Benjamin, was a Revolutionary War veteran and active in politics. He served in the state legislature and was twice elected governor of New Hampshire. Benjamin taught his son the value of hard work, education, honesty, and service to others. He also taught Franklin to revere the Union and honor the Constitution. After attending Bowdoin College in Maine, Franklin decided on the field of law for his career. The future New Hampshire author Nathaniel Hawthorne also attended Bowdoin, and the two became lifelong friends. Hawthorne became a strong influence in Franklin's life. In 1827, while studying law in Amherst, New Hampshire, Pierce met Jane Appleton, who in 1834 would become his wife. 1827 was also the year Pierce was admitted to the New Hampshire Bar. He set up a practice in Hillsboro, where he, like his father, immersed himself in politics. In 1829, he was elected Hillsboro's representative to the state legislature. Two years later, at the age of 26, he became the Speaker of the New Hampshire House, the youngest person ever to serve in that position. Pierce also became involved in national politics, aligning himself with the Democratic Party. In 1833, he was elected to the United States Congress, where he would serve for five years. In 1837, he was elected to the United States Senate, where again, at just 34 years of age, he was the youngest member. He became known as a vigorous campaigner for the Democratic Party. But his family ties were strong, and in February 1842, he resigned his Senate seat to return to his law practice in Concord, New Hampshire, moving with his family to a house he had purchased. Although successful in his legal career, his ingrained sense of duty led him to volunteer in the Mexican War. He served as a brigadier general under General Winfield Scott, who later became his rival in the 1852 presidential election. When the war ended, Pierce returned to his Concord law practice and politics. Well known to influential figures in the Democratic Party, he became a dark horse presidential candidate at the party's 1852 National Convention. This convention was contentious due primarily to the issues of slavery and the possibility of secession by the southern states. Pierce's honesty and ability to compromise began to win supporters. After 49 ballots, Franklin Pierce won the Democratic nomination for President of the United States. He went on to a landslide victory that November. The accomplishments of his administration were many, although perhaps little known today. Among them were improving relations with Great Britain and Canada by gaining trade and fishing rights from both countries. Promoting Western expansion by settling the United States-Mexican border and by planning the beginning of the transcontinental railroad. Reducing the national debt through sound fiscal policies and government integrity. Promoting U.S. influence worldwide, particularly in opening trade with Japan. Establishing civil service practices by examining and classifying government employees. Preserving peace in the nation for four years and thus improving national prosperity. However, all of these were overshadowed by fallout from the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which was an attempt to solve peacefully the slavery issue. The bill, proposed by Senator Stephen Douglas of Illinois, pleased no one, and Pierce was harshly blamed for the resulting violence. Pierce once said, I consider slavery a social and political evil and most sincerely wish that it had no existence upon the face of the earth. However, he was also a strong constitutionalist and firmly believed slavery was not prohibited by the Constitution. His attempts to solve this problem were not successful. Because of this, and because of the surreptitious maneuvering of James Buchanan to replace Pierce as president, Pierce was denied a second-term nomination by his party. He graciously made way for Buchanan as his successor. Due to Jane's poor health and ingratitude for her sacrifices during the Washington years, the couple spent the next two years traveling through Europe. 
Upon their return in 1858, he settled into a life of retirement in Concord. The last years of Franklin Pierce's life were not happy ones. Despite his efforts to preserve the Union, the country erupted into a bloody civil war. Pierce became an outspoken critic of government violations of the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and other laws. This led to accusations of disloyalty against him. In 1863, his wife Jane died, followed a year later with the death of his lifelong friend Nathaniel Hawthorne. As none of his three children had lived to maturity, he was virtually alone. When the war ended, Pierce helped to secure the release from prison of his longtime friend and former Secretary of War, Jefferson Davis, who had served as the President of the Confederacy during the Civil War. In his last public speech, Pierce said, I do not believe that I ever saw a day when I would not have made any possible personal sacrifices to maintain the Constitution of my country and the Union based upon it. After several illnesses, Franklin Pierce died in 1869 at the age of 64 and was buried in Concord with his family. Well, welcome to the Pierce Mint. We are so glad to have you here. And since you're here, I have a lot of stories to tell. In an effort to keep alive his memory and accomplishments, a group of citizens, today known as the Pierce Brigade, rescued his conquered home from demolition and had it moved to its present location in the city's historic district. Thanks to this cadre of dedicated volunteers, you were able to enjoy your visit to the home of Franklin Pierce, 14th President of the United States.